Avalon Hicks. Thank you, Mrs. White. Last year, my grandma, my grandma, Amanda Slang, told our family story. My grandpa Abram is buried here. I'm buried next to him. I was 14 years old and I died. did was register to vote. That meant a lot to him. Now, Mama was 14 when she got married to my father. He was 32. <laughs> His name was Richard Pierce, and she was 18 when she had me. We lived with my grandparents because Mama was too young to be married. She was wild. She had boyfriends, and she was always going out far, and Daddy was chasing her to bring her back home. He shot at the men that she was cheating with. And Grandpa was always saying, it's a good thing your father is such a poor shot or else he can't get. They divorced when I was seven. Grandpa worked in Long Beach. He was a city hall janitor. They decided to move here and bought a house on 8th Street in the colored part of town. A noisy, dirty steam train ran right by our house on California Avenue. And when it rained, it always flooded. Long Beach didn't allow bars or alcohol. They thought if they got Mama out of Los Angeles, she might settle down. It didn't work. She didn't settle down. She moved to San Francisco and died in the earthquake there. My grandparents raised me. My grandfather told me stories about when he was a boy. And my grandma had me teach her how to read. I went to Atlantic Avenue School, just a few blocks from our house. I was the only black student in my class. And I don't want to sound immodest, but I did have the best penmanship out of anyone in the school. On April 8, 1908, my grandpa woke up feeling poorly. Grandma and I walked with him to City Hall. We thought we might help him clean up. He sat down complaining of pain, and Grandpa never complained of pain. So we knew something was wrong. And within an hour, he was gone. Grandpa was beloved by everyone at City Hall. They paid for his funeral. They bought his plot and his headstone, which is missing. But a uh, marker has been ordered to recognize his service in the Civil War and soon he will have a gravestone again. Soon after, I started to cough, a really bad cough. I had tuberculosis. I died at home on September 23rd, just five months after Grandpa. Grandma lost her daughter, her husband, and her granddaughter. And I was so happy that she had Maddie there to help her through the tough time. It's a good thing that Maddie and Mason moved to California. Their great-grandson was Alan Hoskins. He played Farina in the Little Rascals comedies in the 1920s. Soon Grandma moved back to Tennessee. Her family was there. She suffered a serious fracture and her body gave out and she died in 1921. Well, that's my story. Thank you.
by the time we met, he was good at bringing people to Jesus. Oh, could he raise it. We shared a passion for the Lord's message of peace, brotherhood, and forgiveness. We were partners in the ministry for 41 years. Henry went to Prairie View College and earned a degree in theology. I only went to high school, but Henry taught me everything to me. We were married in 1907. That was the year he was ordained by the African Methodist Episcopal Church. He was Reverend Henry Clay White. We traveled all over the country spreading the good word. We went to Oklahoma, Idaho, Montana, and I was ready for some nice weather by the time we moved to Long Beach in 1931. We had a place over on 10th Street near Myrtle, not too far away from where Avalon lived. And the train still ran by, except for now the locomotive was diesel and it's still flooded when it rains. Huh. Well, we had our churches and our stores and everybody knew everybody else. But of course we did, because we couldn't live in any other part of the city. And in 1930, it didn't matter that Henry had a college degree. Just like Abram Clay, he was a janitor for the city. But for the first five years, Henry preached all over. In churches, homes, prayer meetings, everywhere. You name it, we were there. And in 1936, the Grant Chapel AME Church asked him to be their permanent pastor. It had struggled for, mem for members. That was until Reverend White showed up. He grew the congregation and raised enough money to build a new church in the same exact spot where the old one stood. In two years, we had so many new members, we had to add on to the building. Well, in the 1930s and 40s, when the colored sailors were stationed in Long Beach, they used to attend services at our church. They were so young, and for many of them, this was their first time being away from home. We fed them Sunday dinner and treated them just like family. And it wasn't just the sailors. Other people were coming for jobs, building airplanes and ships to help the Lord work. They were coming from all over, including black people. And our community wasn't as small when the war ended and it was when it started. We started missing going out to evangelize. service was held in Los Angeles, but he's laid here to rest. I felt alone, but I really was not alone. I had family here, and I stayed very busy. I was a long-time member of the Women's Christian Temperance League. I was president of one of the local chapters. I held receptions, and I was on the committee for the WCTU's big meetings, and I was on the Missionary Society of our church. And I brought speakers to town just like you did. Oh, and with the WCT. One year, I led the motion for the Christian program. I know him was smiling down on me. That day. Well, my earthly journey in 1960, and I brought you. Thank <laughs> you.